Hello, this is a tutorial on using a tool that's really good for organizing, uh, collaboration, and project management. It's called Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O dot com, gets you to the site. And as you can see, sign up is free. Once you have a Trello account, you can then go and log in. I've already done that and it takes you to this page. Now there's three aspects to Trello and the workflow. There are boards, that's the top level. Then there are lists. Lists are things that are going to be done uh, to the boards. They're going to be items added to the boards. And they create that workflow. And then there are cards, which are uh, essentially building blocks their tasks, ideas, and lists that allow you to move through that workflow and complete the projects. So you can build one of these just for yourself to keep track of things. It's a good organizing tool, or it can be used in a collaborative fashion, and we'll talk about that uh, briefly, the separation of the two. You can also do it individually and then share it with others and collaborate that way. So again, to get started, you have to have an account. So we have an account. Let's quickly take a look at our splash screen here. Uh, I have a team and we'll talk about a team in a minute. You're gonna get this welcome board. So the first time you log in, you can actually go here and it shows you a few more things in depth that are going to be over and above what I'm going to cover in this basic introductory level uh, Trello tutorial. And then you're going to have a list of any boards uh, that you have created. They'll be out here. I have one here I'm going to use for an example called Wine Tasting Party. But basically the board would just be whatever the project is that you're working on. So if it's a particular class and there's four people in a team and you're working on, you know, business project, together, um, you're working on a sociology project, whatever it happens to be, you can actually all work together uh, on the same project in a collaborative fashion and keep track of who's doing what, when it's going to be due, uh, where you are in the process, are there any parts that are, that are late, and that will be really good from a workflow perspective. So it'll help you identify bottlenecks, it will allow you to empower your team, and keep moving forward. So if I wanted to create a board, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a couple of options. I can click on the plus sign here. That's probably the easiest one. And you can see create board is where I'm going to go to most of the time. There's also create a personal team. So you can create a team first and then create boards that that team is responsible for. Again, the board is just another name for what you're calling that particular project. So for right now, we would, we would go into creating a board and move from there. Again, personal team, create that, and then you can create boards underneath that team. Create a business team, that is not in the free version. There is a pro version of Trello, and in order to create a business team with more of the powerful tools, uh, there's a cost involved in doing that. Once you do get members of your team, uh, the initials will be present. So for me, it's going to be RP. And as we add more members to the team, everybody's initials uh, would be there. So when you want to see who's working on a particular project, you'll be able to tell from those initials. I think the easiest way to look at uh, one of these uh, boards kind of in motion or in a workflow process is to kind of look at one that I just built from a test perspective. So it's called Wine Tasting Party. So when I went in and created a board, I just called it Wine Tasting Party. So I'm now going to launch that board so you can see what it's all about. So what we have here, here's the name of the board. Here is the privacy settings. Everything defaults to private. So only people that I add to this board can view it or edit this particular uh, board. You also have the ability to make it public, and then you can actually, uh, if you create a team, you can set it up so that the team gets to access it. You don't have to individually invite people to the board. So we have these areas here, these lists. 
So we have needs to be done. Again, it's a wine tasting party as my project. So needs to be done, doing, and done. Now you can add as many lists as you want. You would just click add a list, give it a name, click save. I'm going to get this menu out of the way for a moment here. <clears throat> so if there was something else that I needed to add, I would do that and hit save. And as you can see, I can keep adding more. Okay. I can get rid of, well, I'll leave that alone for right now. I might use it for something else. So that is the list. Then the subsections of the list or the different tasks, ideas, are what are called cards. And you can see here how under needs to be done, we say we have to have a party theme, determine what the subject for the wine food pairings are, determine whether we buy the wine or have people BYOB, what food is needed, etc. Okay, so in case I needed to go in to make some changes to any of these, you'll notice when I hover over them, I get this little pencil. That's the universal symbol for editing. That allows me to go in. So determine party theme. Maybe that's what I want to call it. Other thing is you'll notice that I have a red coloring here. I just added that. You can do whatever you want in that case. Again, in the edit, there's the label, and I have the ability to change the colors. So kind of the way I laid it out is, you know, red. Uh, these are the problems that we need to address. Yellow, we got working on them, or we at least have some ideas as to what we're going to do. And then green, so we're looking like a stoplight. Green is, you know, good to go. So if I needed to add a card to any of these, add a card to any of these, add a card to any of these, and so forth, I just click down here and to add a card. So I've put this kind of fake one up here. I'm going to go ahead and add a card, and I could put in anything that I want <clears throat> and add that card, and I can continue to add other cards. Just as simple as that. If I don't need that card, I can get rid of it. I can delete anything. I can actually move things around. I can click and drag things into different orders if I'd like. If I need to do anything with a particular card, notice that we have some symbols under here. I actually created a list, is what this particular symbol is, and I created a due date for this particular activity. So let's kind of go across here from left to right. We have determine party theme. Okay, So if I click on this, we can see Determine what is the subject of the food and wine pairing. So basically, this is I have some comments um, regarding that particular activity, that particular card. And if I open this one up, we can see that I have a due date here of January 9th at 12 p.m. at noon. Okay. So I can change this at any time. Here's how you add the due date. Uh, I can add members to this particular card if more than Bob is going to work on it. The labels, again, is how I created the color. I could create a checklist, things to do, and maybe Bob's going to do this one, and Mary's going to do this one, and John's going to do this one, and then I can have due dates. I can also put attachments in, and then I have actions. So I have ads and actions as to things I can do to this individual card. So I can move it. I can copy it. Subscribe is a nice feature for any member who's associated with this card, or if we're using a team concept, any member of the team that this board is uh, has access for that particular team. If people subscribe to that particular card, anytime there's any comment or change made to that card, they're going to get a notification. So that's kind of a nice feature. You don't always have to go back in and check where something is from an updated perspective. So I'll get out of here just by hitting the X. And then again, here's something else that happens to have a comment here or a description. There will be two reds from Chile and two reds from Argentina, then a dessert wine from either, five total bottles. So it's just a little bit more detail here. So anybody else that would need to add a comment uh, or, or make some type of uh, recommendation or throw out an idea, they would just go ahead and add a comment here, and they would have a different set of initials if it's not me adding that comment. And so there's a number of different things that they can do. They can attach a file. They can um, mention a particular member. So this would be like at and then the, their email address. 
so how, however, they're listed as a member of this course, and we got some other types of things. We can add an additional card, which creates another set of tasks or ideas moving forward off of this particular one. So we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. I did want to point out another one down here. So we have uh, determine whether uh, we buy the wine or have people BYOB. So then this one is, if we buy the bottles, it would come out to $20 a couple and we can make sure the regions are covered. So if I then click on this to get some more detail, we can see that um, what we have is two things that have happened here. We have Robert Payne said, I was able to find a Malbec from Argentina. So we have a comment. And yet we also have the fact that he has put a check mark into this list that was created there was a wine list of the types of wines that need to be brought. Bob says he's got the Malbec. And so we can see that 25% of the list is filled up. When I leave here, you can see right here that we have a comment. That's what that little icon uh, represents. And then here we have a list and one out of the four things have already been completed. So that means three out of four are yet to go. So let's move over here, uh, show the menu. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, what you have here, you can do lots of customizing of your workspace. You can change the background color from this blue to, um, I think you got nine colors here. If you want to buy either the business class or the gold membership, again, that would cost you. You can get access to uh, other images and that type of thing. For our purposes, we're gonna leave it alone at the blue. Open up that menu again. Uh, Pop-ups uh -huh, give you the ability to add some additional functionality. It's a little bit more sophisticated than what I'm going to go into at this particular time. But just so you know, it, it exists. There's a more area down here that allows you to adjust things in settings. Here's that subscribe feature. I can print this entire layout and export it. I can email it. Uh, to the board settings that I create here. I can copy the board. Here's the link to this board. So if uh, in this private setting, I would have to take this link and give this to other people if I wanted them to see what's going on. If I want them to participate in this board, the easiest thing to do is to add them as members. And if you have something that's uh, more of a like a class project perspective, I think it's probably easy to create a team first, put all the members in, and then once you're in there, then you create the board, and then all of the members of the team have access and they have edit privileges to that board and what's going on uh, to the particular board. So uh, a number of uh, features there. <clears throat> Again, adding an additional list, we kind of talked about that. I can ar archive the list, I can subscribe. So the subscribe feature, I can subscribe to the entire board or I can just subscribe to a list. And again, the subscribe feature is a notification feature that would allow whoever has that subscription to get notified when there's something that's changed. Here is my different choices of privacy settings. The board is private, which is the default. The team board is mem uh, visible to members of the team or a public board, which means anybody that has a Trello.com account would be able to, um, to search for it and find it just like they're using Google search. One of the other things as far as creating your account goes, I just use my robert.pain at baker.edu email, but you can also log in with your Google credentials if that would be easier for you. A lot of these apps um, allow you to do that. So again, a nice tool to be used for project management. You can walk through the workflow and everybody can see where you're at. Um, if I were to, let me go up and kind of make a change here. Let's say I, uh, wanted to change this due date and I move it up to the previous Saturday and then say save, you know, it'll show me that it's past due. So when you have things listed like this due date that you're creating, uh, that due date isn't going to show up being highlighted. It's not here yet. If I am within 24 hours of the due date, that area will be highlighted in yellow as kind of a warning and then you saw what happened when I changed it and showed the due date as being past due 
it uh, kind of highlights it in red so you can see what's going on. So a nice free tool, again, Trello.com, great for doing some organizing at the very least, but I think it's a really good tool for doing collaboration and doing project management tasks.